Chapter 22 I sent Ian in shortly thereafter, and he didn't protest at all, maybe proving right away that he would be as compliant as I needed him to be. It was certainly an interesting proposition though I'd have to get much further along in this process before I could know if I'd need to use it or not. Too soon, I had to get ready for dinner. So I put butterscotch away and took a brush to my boots. I wasn't terribly... It wasn't terribly dirty. Night, 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 I whispered to my horse, slipping her a piece of sugar before heading back to the palace. Edlin, someone called as I entered the palace. It was Kyle. He was talking with Henry, Eric, Fox, and Burke. He gave the others a sign to wait for him and jogged toward the hall to me. Jogged down the hall to me. Hey, he said, his crooked smile settling on his face. He looked a little nervous. How are you? How are you? Good. I was talking with some of the, I was talking with some of the guys. We have a proposal for you. I sighed. Another one? Huh? Nothing. I shook my head to clear it. Uh, Should I come speak to them now? Well, yeah, but I wanted to ask you something first. Sure. Kyle stuffed his hands in his pockets. Are are we okay? I squinted. Kyle, you realize you're not actually my boyfriend, right? He chuckled. Yeah, I do, but I don't know. I liked having someone to show my designs to and laugh with, and I wanted to come check on you after I heard about Jack. But I was afraid you wouldn't want to be... I was afraid you wouldn't want to talk about it. Then I was afraid that staying away, staying away would make you upset too. Do you know how difficult you are? I'd forget, but you keep reminding me, I teased. Kyle fidgeted. I'll ease up. But seriously, are we okay? I watched as he bit his lip. And had to fight my self from daydreaming about them. He said he was here for me. So I hoped, maybe, I'd get to feel those lips again. Yes, Kyle, we're okay. Don't worry so much. All right, come over here. I think you're going to like this idea. We turned and walked down the cluster of boys waiting. Henry immediately kissed my hand. Hello today, he greeted, making me laugh. Hello, Henry. Burke, Fox. Hi, Eric. Your Highness, Burke began. Maybe this is a little out of line, but we were thinking that the selection is a very challenging time for you. I chuckled. You have no idea. Fox smiled. He and Burke looked a little comical next to each other. Burke was so burly, and he was so lean. It has to be crazy. You have your work to do, and then you need to find time to do solo dates. Or try to get around to everyone at at a party. It seems 
exhausting. So, so we had an idea, Kyle said. Could the four of us do something with you this week? This was completely brilliant. Yes, I exclaimed. That would be great. Any ideas on what to do? We were thinking about coming together. Burke's face was so happy, I couldn't say no. Even though that was exactly what I wanted to do. Cooking? I said a fake, pl- a fake smile plastered on my face. Come on, Kyle urged. It'll be fun. Oh, we were planning on cooking together. I exhaled nervously. Um, all right, cooking. How about tomorrow night? Perfect, perfect, Fox said quickly. Like he was worried I'd change my mind. Okay, Thursday, six o'clock. I'll meet you in the, in the foyer, and we can walk to the kitchens together. This was going to be a nightmare. If you'll excuse me, I have to get ready for dinner. I headed upstairs, wondering if there was any way to make this better. I doubted it. Threads, now, threads, you have one new follower. Speech off. Nina, I said. Ooh, Nina. Nina, I called. Walking into... Walking into my room. Yes, miss? Can you start a bath? I need one before dinner. Certainly. I wrestled with my boots and flung off my dress. Besides the simple giving and responding to orders, we hadn't spoken much lately. And I had to admit, it was hard on me. My room was my retreat. The place I rested and sketched and hid from the world. Nina was a part of that, and her being upset with me set everything off kilter. I walked into the bathroom, happy to find that she was dropping pieces of lavender into the tub without me asking. Nina, you're a mind reader. I try, she said slyly. I moved cautiously, not wanting to anger her again. Have you heard from Mark recently? It seems she couldn't help her smile. Yes, just yesterday. What did you say? He, what did you say he studied again? I slipped into the warm water, already feeling better. Biochemistry, she looked down. I admit, he uses plenty of words I don't understand when he tells me about it. But I get the idea of what he means. <sighs> I wasn't trying to immediate, I wasn't trying to imply, I thought you were stupid, Nina. <sighs> I was curious. I-, I thought that was obvious. Biochemistry. Biochemistry. Something about that rang a bell. She sighed and dropped more lavender into the bath. It came out much harsher than that. There are boys boys here from very different walks of life than mine. I can hardly stand to be in the same room with some of them. It was intriguing that the two of you do so much, such very jobs and still manage to share common ground. She shook her head. We work. It's not something you can figure out on paper. Some people are meant to be together. I leaned back in the tub. If there was no way to explain anything, then why bother? I thought again of Ian's offer 
and Kyle's worry and Hale's questions. I couldn't believe how murky everything had become. I barely understood my own feelings anymore. I knew I wanted my independence and the idea of any man coming up behind me trying to fix my work or do it for me was unacceptable. Then I thought of Dad's gray hairs slowly mixing in with the blonde. I wondered how far I'd go to make his life easier. It was strange. Basically, every boy downstairs was an option if I really had to choose one. And each of them could easily hurl my world into a new trajectory. I didn't like that. I wanted to be in charge of my path. I wondered if that was the reason for putting a fence around myself. If it was the worry that anyone who crossed it would take away my control. But maybe that control was an illumination, was an illusion. Even if I passed on all that selected, even if I passed on all the selected boys, would someone eventually come along and make me not even care about control? Would he cause me to hand it over willingly? It seemed impossible. It seemed impossible, something I certainly couldn't have imagined happening a few weeks ago. There were still plenty of reasons to keep my guard up, and I knew I would. Still, I didn't think I'd be able to ignore the way these boys were attracting, were affecting me much longer.